If you've written applications with JAXRS for any amount of time, you will know what a message body reader and a message body writer is. At least you'll be familiar with those words because it's very likely that you'd have seen that in an error. Message body reader not found for some data type, message body writer not found for some data type. Those are very prevalent in JAXRS. Uh, the reason why these are essential is the message body reader and the message body writer is what converts from the raw content that gets sent over the request and the raw content that gets sent in the response to our Java types and vice versa. Let me give you an example. If you were to send an object as a response for your resource and you annotate it with produces application JSON, there is something that has to take that raw object and convert it to JSON and send it to the client. Okay, so this conversion happens thanks to a message body writer. True to its name, it's actually writing to the message body. So whenever you need to send some object in the message body, the conversion to a string to the JSON payload or an XML payload or any other content type happens due to a message body writer. Similarly, when you're accepting input in JSON or XML in a post request or a put request, there'll, there'll be content in the request body, right? So that request, will have payload that's converted to a Java type using a message body reader. It's reading from a message body. So these two classes are very important when you are doing marshalling and unmarshalling of types in Java. The one thing that does confuse people is a difference between message body reader and message body writer versus what we've learned so far, which is the param converter. We did uh, an implementation of param converter where we converted a string to a custom data type. Now, how is it different from message body reader and message body writer? Well, the difference is actually in the name. You see, there is message body versus param. So that should give us a clue. Message body is basically dealing with the content of the message. If you were to make a put request, the request itself would contain some payload in the request body, right? So when you're updating a resource, you do a put request and the request body is gonna contain the representation of the updated resource. This is different from params. So we looked at a lot of param annotations. We had uh, path param, query param, header param, or a bunch of param annotations. We covered a lot of that in the previous course. But basically these are parameters to the request and not the content of the request itself, right? So hopefully this distinction is clear. Message body deals with the content in the request body and the response body, okay? When you're sending XML or JSON in a put request body, and uh, the response contains XML or JSON in the response body, we're dealing with message body readers and message body writers. But if you're sending parameters to the request, like the header param, cookie param, path param, those are the param converters, okay? So we're gonna look at a couple of different scenarios so that this distinction is clear. Let's look at a put request to this URL, web API slash users slash Kaushik. Now this put request is gonna take some data in the request body, right? We are updating the user with the name Kashik. So what are the different parameters here? So the parameter is Kashik, which is a path param, right? So this is something that you would pick in your resource by using the add path param annotation. So this is param. So if you were to deal with this, you would need param converters. However, the message body is the content of the request. So this would need message body readers and message body writers to deal with. In this specific case, when you're doing a put request, you're reading a payload into a Java type. So this would be a message body reader. All right, let's look at another scenario. Here we're doing a get request to a comments URL, which is post slash post ID slash comments, question mark, start equals something and size equals something. So what are the parameters and what's the message body here? Well, there is a path param, which is post ID. There is a query param for start, and there's one more query param for size. And now what is the message body here? Well, there is no message body because this is a get request and get doesn't have a message body in it, okay? Uh, the third scenario we're gonna look at is a post. Now let's say we are creating a new account. 
right? So we have a post request to slash web API slash accounts and uh, the post body is gonna contain the account information. We're also passing some header information, let's say for authentication or something like that. Now, what are the parameters here? Well, there is one header param. And uh, any other parameters? Well, there's nothing. So header param would be your param converter, okay? Now, what are the message body elements over here? There is one, which is the body of the post request, which is the account information. Okay, so everywhere where we have these parameters, we are dealing with param converters. And everywhere we have message body, we are dealing with message body readers and message body writers. When there is a request, we are dealing with message body readers. And when we are sending something back in the response, we are dealing with message body writers. I've seen a lot of people getting confused with the difference between param converters and uh, the message body converters, which is the message body readers and the message body writers. So hopefully this distinction is clear now.